All right, everybody, welcome back. Good morning. We are doing more positional big boards. Today we're doing wide receiver. Later today we're also going to do the tight end. So we're doing pass catchers. You guys know how good of a draft class this is for the pass catchers. The receivers, this is the best receiver class I've ever seen. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I love the fact that the Seahawks have such good receivers, but there is a part of me that's like, it's kind of too bad we have that position so sewn up because... This is a great draft to add on to your receiver core, and it wouldn't shock me if we found a way to do it anyway, so don't rule it out. But um, yeah, so receivers coming up. Uh, I want to remind everybody once again that my positional big boards are done for, um, I'm sorry, not the positional big board, but the overall big board is done, and I've posted it on my Patreon, and I posted it in the community section here on YouTube. If you want to view it, you can pledge $10 or more to the Patreon. It doesn't have to be a recurring pledge, by the way. It could just be a one-time pledge, and then you just download the document. Or you can become a Tier 3 Ring of Honor member here on YouTube and see it that way. I think it's eight, 287 players. So if you want to see that, that's how you can see that. Um, but just positionally, let's uh, go over it now, starting with the wide receivers. So number one is Marvin Harrison Jr. I think that's a... I don't even think there's anything to discuss there. He's um, not quite generational, but he is the best receiver in this class. I haven't really wavered on that either. I don't see any reason to waver on it. Um, Malik Neighbors is my number two, and it kind of hurt my heart to do it. He is a better prospect than Odunze. He just is. And when I saw Odunze test the way he did, my initial reaction was to elevate him to number two, but then I, I took a step back. I looked at neighbors and i looked at odunze and i was like neighbors neighbors just has more going on just a little bit more going on so he's number two and odunze's number three <clears throat> so yeah just just i have to be real i have to be honest here um number four would be brian thomas jr the other lsu guy um i feel like he's a little bit underrated too i i know it's hard to put two receivers on the same team in like top 10 consideration but i almost would not quite, but I don't think he's that far away. Um, so yeah, pretty clearly. I think that's like a, your four horsemen of the apocalypse at the position, basically. Like those four guys are just incredible. And then there is a little bit of a drop off. But I still like Adonai Mitchell. If he can get his head right and show that he cares about football enough, I think he'll be great. And I think the talent there is clearly worth a very big investment in the draft. Um, after that, we've got number six, Lad McConkey, who I think is right on the border of first round pick and second round pick. So really, really good, phenomenal route runner, going to do some really, really interesting things in this league. Good testing as well. Um, a little bit on the smaller side, but I think he's part of this very, very impressive rookie, uh, receiver class. Number seven is Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. Another really fun player player who impressed me more and more. I watched him. The tape is a lot of fun. So Xavier Leggett goes into number seven here. Keon Coleman, kind of a tough one, kind of hard to know how he fits in here, but there's enough going on here for him to be number eight for me. Clearly talented, clearly has a chance to find a way in this league. Um, there are limitations, but I think he'll find his way through. Number nine is Roman Wilson of Michigan. You have to make some assumptions about him, but I think they're assumptions that are fair to make. Uh, if you put him in a pass-happy offense, he'll be a big-time producer, I think. Malachi Corley, who we've met with, uh, Western Kentucky. This is another one of those Debo types. Fun player, fun tape. Brings a lot of those Debo-like qualities to the table. Number 11 is Jalen Polk, or Jalen Polk. I always have a... I have a pull to want to say Jalen because of the, the way it's spelled, but it's Jalen... Polk, Washington. Um, I I do think that there is a little bit of the drop off in the appeal of the receiver once you get to the Polk area, but I do think Polk has some underrated talents that people are sleeping on a little bit that should work at the next level really well. Uh, Jermaine Burton from Alabama, another sleeper for me, guy who I like better than most. <coughs> Xavier Worthy's number thirteen. I do think he's overrated, and I'm not really a believer, but. The talent is enough to push him in the third, I think. Um, probably the early third as well, if we're being honest. Like, I just... Um, there's only so much you can take away from a guy who runs like this. It, it is what it is. Um, Luke McCaffrey. Really like Luke McCaffrey. Really excited about what he's got. 
Uh, probably a little overzealous on him, but you know what? How can you go wrong betting on a McCaffrey? Teams do not get to where they want to get to because they di- fail because they uh, didn't bet enough on a McCaffrey. So going with that at 14, 15, Devontae Walker of North Carolina. Like his potential, but he's got a lot to work on. There's plenty of talent, but it didn't come together completely in college. Hopefully it comes together in the NFL. Then I go Jalen McMillan. Still kind of waiting for him to get back to what he was in 2022. Will probably never happen, but still uh, still offering some intriguing uh, yak talent, I think. Malik Washington, really fun player, really unique player in this draft. He's the uh, small guy from Virginia who's a yak monster. He basically plays like a running back. Uh, I like him. Uh, then you kind of have another cutoff here, and then you get into number 18 with Ricky Pearsall. Uh, Florida, Troy Franklin of Oregon. These are two really kind of weird, awkward, hard to really feel great about, but also talented enough to feel okay about players. Kind of, kind of tough ones to pull apart for me. Brendan Rice, Jerry Rice's kid of USC is number 20. 21, this is another cutoff point for me, kind of. Aeneas Smith, A&M Aggies, the Texas A&M Aggies. Uh, Pretty good uh, slot receiver, but he needs to... uh, get past his uh, medical issues if he's going to become what I think he will become in the NFL. Um, Day three area, Javon Baker of UCF leads off, and then Jamari Thrash of Louisville. Anthony Gold, fun slot receiver, but there's a lot working against him because he's so small. Uh, Cornelius Johnson of Michigan, another one of those Michigan receivers you have to do a lot of projection on. He's number 25. Number 26 is Johnny Wilson, a big guy who... I, I don't know. I, I don't know what is, is going to happen with Johnny Wilson, but this is as high as I can go. Number 27, Ryan Flournoy, Southeast Missouri State. Mostly just based off the testing because there's so little tape on this guy. But uh, Ryan Flournoy, very interesting athlete. Number 28, Bub Means, another sleeper for me. I uh, like his mix of physical ability and uh, athleticism. So I feel like there's something here that people are sleeping on just a little bit here. Um, Taj Washington of USC, another USC receiver, number 29. Number 30 is Marcus Rose Me Jack Saint of Georgia, quite a name. Number 31, I go Jacob Cowling of Arizona. And now we're kind of segueing into the guys who I'm not really warmed up on, but they're lingering around. Lidatric Griffin of Mississippi State, number 32. Number 33 is Jaquan Jackson of Tulane. And then we get into kind of the UDFA territory, Jalen Coker of Holy Cross, Jordan Whittington of Texas, and Isaiah Williams of Illinois round us out. And that is your receiver. I Receiver was the main reason why I had to shrink my font size on my document here. There were so many receivers, they would not fit on one page until I shrunk the uh, font enough. So yeah, that's how many receivers there are. And there were a couple guys I didn't even get into. Now, not big guys, obviously. They're guys who may or may not get drafted. But uh, there were guys I had to skip that I otherwise might have paid attention to. But there was so much, I just felt like I had to just let it fly at some point. So that's my order on receivers going into this draft. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any strong disagreements. Um, Really, really fun group. Really excited for this group. Kind of wish we could be a bigger part of it than we are. But um, at the same time, I acknowledge that... There's not a lot of room right now, and in the imminent future, we can't create room. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks.